Hey everyone, Josh here back with Fight Bad Medicine. Today I want to talk to you about how you can fight hypertension or high blood pressure naturally. Our mission here is to arm you with health knowledge so you can have better and more natural alternatives and you can fight bad medicine. So before we go into how you can fight high blood pressure naturally, you really have to understand the mechanism behind high blood pressure. You have to understand why high blood pressure happened in the first place. Now, conventional medicine will tell you that in 95% of the cases, it's called essential hypertension, where there's no identifiable cause for the high blood pressure. This is utter nonsense. Why? Because all you have to know is a simple physics equation. And you've probably learned it um, in high school or college. It's a simple pressure equals force over area. So pressure, the blood pressure, will increase if the force increases. The blood pressure will increase if the area decreases. So what are we talking about here? We're talking about the force on the blood vessels or the area of the blood vessels. So we're talking about the, the circumference of the blood vessels. Now, how does this happen? How does force, the force on the blood vessels get higher? How does the area on the blood vessels get lower? both increasing the blood pressure. Now we're gonna go into that. So let's talk about the force on the blood vessel. So if the fluid, which in this case is the blood, is pushing up against the pipe, in this case the blood vessel, if it's pushing harder on the blood vessel, you're going to increase the blood pressure. Now how does that happen? It can happen if the blood gets thicker. If the blood is too viscous, if the blood is too thick, it's going to put more pressure on the blood vessel. Remember that the, the body is trying to maintain a certain flow through the blood vessels so you can get nutrients. That's what we have blood, to get nutrients, to get oxygen. It needs to maintain a certain flow. Now if the blood is thicker, it needs to pump harder and harder because that blood is so thick. If it was, if it was more fluid, it wouldn't have to pump that hard to, to maintain that same flow. So we number one, we want to make sure that the blood is not too thick. We're going to talk about that in a second. I want to go into another mechanism. Um, we have to talk about the area of the, the blood vessel. Now how can the area of the blood vessel decrease? Now what happens is it could either be from the inside or it could be the blood vessel itself. So from the inside you can start to have plaque buildup in the blood vessel. Now, the plaque buildup is a survival mechanism. The, the blood vessel can get damaged, and so the body decides, hey, we need to patch it up. If we don't patch it up, these blood vessels are gonna get leaky, and you're not gonna survive for too long. So the body uses um, things like calcium and cholesterol, and it helps patch up the blood vessels. Now, that's all fine right now, but over time, as remember, cholesterol attaches to cholesterol attaches to cholesterol, and now you have a very small space for which the blood to flow through. Now, remember, you have to maintain the flow. So in order to do this, now you have to increase the pressure against the arteries. So you're getting, let's say, the same amount of blood, or now even more blood passing through because you have to keep the blood pressure, you have to keep the flow going. Now it's putting more pressure on the blood vessels more pressure on the blood vessels, more scarring on the blood vessels, more cholesterol. Now, that's just uh, a bad situation getting worse. It's just a vicious cycle. Now, another thing that could happen over time is with scarring of the blood vessels, and with anything that gets damaged in the body, you get calcification. It's another way that the body protects itself. But what happens is when blood vessels get calcified, they actually stiffen. And when blood vessels stiffen, remember, the artery and arteries in this case are the ones that are dilating and constricting. If they can't dilate, if the arteries can't get bigger, the flow through the arteries is going to be um, is going to be decreased. And so you need to pump you need to pump up that flow. And guess what? The pressure it can't the the blood vessels can't expand. But at the same time, the blood is pushing on that blood vessel, and you're getting more scarring and more damage, and just and just the same. And it's just a vicious cycle. And one thing leads to the next. And then eventually, now our pump for this fluid, the pump on these pipes, which in our case is the heart, now the heart has to work a lot harder. Now eventually, the heart, over many years, 
just says, I give up. And that's where you get something called heart failure. I mean, you've all heard of it, heart failure, but the, either the, the heart can expand too much and it, the heart muscle gets very thin, or the heart vessel um, actually gets very thick. It can, it can go both ways, depending on what's going on. But high blood, you know, if the, if the heart has to work harder and harder and harder, eventually it gives out. So now what happens? If the heart weakens, now the blood vessels are like, we have to increase the pressure because our pump is not pumping properly. So the whole system is, is going down. It's just one thing leads to the next, leads to the next. Now, now that you understand the mechanisms, now what does conventional medicine do? Conventional medicine uses medications. So they use medications like beta blockers. So they try to s slow um, the heart down. So the heart, but actually slow it down, but help the heart pump more efficiently. So if the heart is pumping more efficiently, now that, now that you can decrease the blood, the blood pressure. Calcium channel blockers, they dilate the blood vessels, allowing more better blood flow. Diuretics, you can actually take fluid out of the body. The less fluid in the body, now the lower the pressure is gonna be. And then you have ACE inhibitors, which, and, and um, angiotensin receptor blockers, um, you might know as like lisinopril, like or, or um, uh, tell me Sartan, Losartan, you might know these drugs. Those drugs will actually dilate the blood vessels, they work on the kidneys to help, um, they, they work on blocking enzyme and help dilates the blood vessel. Now, listen, you say, okay, so the medications are taking care of things, but they're not really getting to the root cause of the issue. They're not really helping the blood vessels repair themselves. They're not helping the heart repair itself. So eventually, you're going, what's going to happen is you're going to get more and more and more damage over time and you're going to have to end up taking more and more medications over time. And besides that, the medications themselves come with side effects, beta blockers, um, contraindicated people with COPD. Why? Because beta blockers um, will slow down the heart, but they actually will also constrict uh, things. So what happens is um, you'll actually, what happens is in the lungs, you're actually going to um, constrict the lungs. And you constrict the lungs, you can't breathe so well, not so good in COPD. Also hurts people in erectile dysfunction, it hurts, it hurts um, people's eyes, it hurts people's digestion because it works on the sympathetic nervous system. Calcium channel blockers, they're gonna cause your legs to get swollen if you have a tendency for swollen legs, which can happen very much in people with high blood pressure over time, and that's not such a great thing. Diuretics. Diuretics will rob you of all types of nutrients. All types. ACE inhibitors. They're going to cause your potassium levels to go really high, which is not really great for our body. So they cause a lot of imbalances, and they cause all of them cause different nutrient deficiencies. Now, now that you know the mechanisms and you know what conventional medicine does, in the next video, we're going to talk about exactly what you can do how to treat um, high blood pressure and how to handle these mechanisms and how to repair these mechanisms. How do you help the blood vessels have more flexibility? How do you heal the heart so it pumps better? How do you make the blood less viscous? How do you make it thinner? So we're gonna talk about that in the next video. So continue on to um, how to treat hypertension, high blood pressure naturally, part two. Thank you, continue.